پھر عمرانی ان کا مختصر تعارف آپ میں سے شاید کچھ احباب تو جانتے ہوں گے جب سب سے پہلے المہدی قائم ہوا اور اس کی جو پہلی نماز جمعہ جو جہاں پہ قائم ہوئی تھی تو انہوں نے اقتدا فرمائی تھی تو ان کو ویلکم کہتے ہیں اور ان سے درخواست گزار رہے ہیں کہ وہ آج کی اس ماہ مبارک رمضان کی نشست میں تشریف لائیں اور ممبر پہ اور معاوضہ حسنہ سے مستفیض فرمائیں ان کا استقبال لاؤڈ سال آباد اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری و اہل العقدت من لسانی یفقہ قولی الحمدللہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على سیدنا و نبینا ومولانا ابی القاسم المصطفی محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين روحي وأرواه العالمين له الفداء أما بعد First and foremost, my condolences to you brothers and sisters in Islam and to all of the Muslims throughout the world, especially to the master of our time, Imam Al-Hujjah. Ajjal Allahu Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. On this day and occasion of the wafat and demise of Ummul Mu'mineen, Sayyida Khadija, Salamullahu Alayha. Since Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has blessed us one more time to experience this blessed month of Ramadan and with the permission of our elders insha'Allah I want to mention three or four points time permitting about the mission of this holy month when we look into the Quran one of the ayahs that talks about one of the most important aspects of this month Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum usiyam kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattakoon this fasting then we also see shahr ramadhan alladhi unzila fihi al-quran هُدًا لِلنَّاسِ وَبَيِّنَاتٍ مِّنَ الْهُدَى وَالْفُرْقَانِ This Qur'an. This Shahru Ramadan, this month of Ramadan, if we look at it like Masjid Al-Haram, then we can look at this Qur'an and this fasting as the Kaaba. Its focus is to bring us to these points. But what is the purpose of the Qur'an and what is the purpose of the Siyam? In that first ayah I mentioned, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum al-Siyam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us that Allah has prescribed this fasting for you. And how beautifully. 
since on the surface fasting is something that seems difficult, especially in the desert and in the hot months and long days of the summer, Allah uses, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu. He addresses us with this beautiful phrase. O you who believe, O you who have iman in me, to prepare us for this fasting. Then he says, we have made fasting obligatory upon you, prescribed it for you. And in order to take the difficulty away from this important prescription, to lessen the difficulty even more, he says, Kama kutiba ala ladina min qablikum. Don't worry. Fasting is not new for you. Others have fasted before you. Why? The fasting based on the Quran and the riwayat have many objectives, but the most important objective and goal, the purpose, in reality, the philosophy behind fasting, uh, behind fasting, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ This fasting is meant to develop taqwa in you. Then, with this Quran, we also see Alif la mim dhalik al kitabu la rayba fihi hudal lil muttaqin. It is as if the fasting, the Quran, the holy month of Ramadan, all are focused on one major objective, and that is nothing other than taqwa. What is taqwa? Is taqwa one level or does it have degrees? What is the relationship between hidayah, hudal lil muttaqin, and taqwa? These are some of the questions that we want to answer tonight briefly. Alhamdulillah, it is a blessing. First, lead that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this undeserving servant of his the opportunity to talk to the believers on the day of the wafat of Sayyidah Khadija salamullah alayha. And to once again come and visit this blessed center that alhamdulillah maybe it's been longer than 10 years maybe in those first days, but mashallah, I'm very happy to see that the mu'mineen are attending and the center is, alhamdulillah, improving both on the surface and spiritually for, the, for your own well-being and for the success of this center, which is yours, let us recite aloud salawat. <laughs> what is taqwa? To find the definition of this word, we need to turn back to the Qur'an. However, the Holy Qur'an is not a book of science. It's not a book of literature. It's not one of those subject matter books that you study in school and in the university for us to come and look to see where under ta or in reality under wow the word, the, the root word for taqwa comes and to see what the definition is. No. The Quran above all else is a book of human making. It's been revealed to make this bashar, you and I, into insan. To make this, you and I, into Adam. So we should not look for this type of definition for taqwa from the Quran. No. Quran defines it by mentioning the characteristics, the sifat of muttaqin. Hudal lil muttaqin, alladheena yu'minuna bil ghayb. In here, the Quran is defining taqwa for us. What is the definition of taqwa? Alladheena yu'minuna bil ghayb, wa yuqimuna salata, wa mimma razaqnahum yunfiqoon, wa alladheena yu'minuna bima unzila ilayka, وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ وَبِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُوْقِنُونَ Quran here is defining taqwa but based on the characteristic of muttaqi. 
The first part of the definition of taqwa alladhina yu'minuna bil ghaib this iman what is iman the word iman is derived from amn security safety amniyat what does that mean it means that your aqeedah and belief it reaches the level of iman when you secure it from shak and taraddud and doubt when iman is secured from raib and from shak when aqida is secured from these it becomes iman alladhina amanu alladhina yu'minuna bil ghaib they believe in the ghaib the muttaqi is someone who in addition to that which is seen which is sensed mahsus he has iman in that which is ghaib and ghaib as well meaning what that the person with taqwa and fasting wants to make us reach this level is that he believes Allah has created two types of being. This mawjood is two types. One is mahsus that you can sense with your eyes and ears and all of these, these five senses. Whether these are the five senses or they are helped with machinery and equipment. With the help of a microscope we see these viruses and germs and small creatures. With the help of this telescope, we see the far distant galaxies. These are all mahsus. Muttaqi, in addition to this, he says there's another type of mawjood, which is ma'qul. You see it with the eyes of your aql. You sense it with the capacity and the power of your intellect. All of the atheists and kuffar in the olden days, the communists, and nowadays the different groups that exist, they deny the maqulat and they say that which only exists is what we can see, what we can sense, that which is mahsus, that which we can touch and smell. We don't accept anything being mawjood outside of this. But the muttaqi, no. His breadth of thought, his soul and heart is so wide, so expansive, that he also accepts the ma'qulat and what you sense with your aql and your intellect. Alladhina yu'minuna bil ghayb. One of the things that this definition of bil ghaib is it refers to this the tafsir of these ayat the mufassirin each one has spent hundreds of pages some of them more describing the tafsir of these ayat in this half an hour or so that we have with each other we can only scratch the surface but the muttaqi he has secured his aqidah which is three parts We say our usul al-deen is five. But the pillar of the usul al-deen is five. The other two come from tawheed and nabuwa. Our belief in the oneness of Allah, the nabuwa of the previous messengers and the final messenger, and ma'ad and resurrection, life after death. The adil comes from the tawheed and the imama comes from the Nabuwa. Allah has mentioned the Aqidah completely in, this ayah, in these ayat. Alladhina yu'minuna bil ghaib wa yu'minuna bima unzila ilayka wa ma unzila min qablik wa bil akhirati hum yuqinun. These three pillars, muttaqi, his belief and Aqidah are that level. Then he continues and he defines muttaqi. One was from the aspect of our heart. The heart meaning the soul. 
In son, in reality, we're this soul. The body is a vessel. When I say, for instance, I like, I dislike, we like, you, we, they, we're not referring to the body, we're referring to the ruh. This ruh is insan, this qalb is insan, this nafs is insan. One of them is taqwa, the definition of taqwa from inside, which is our aqa'id. The next is our a'amal. وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ And from these a'amal, Allah defines taqwa by two actions. But these two actions are the head of all other a'amal. Why? The ulama have stated that our actions are divided into two categories. One is individual and personal. The salah covers that. One is social. The mimma razaknahum yunfiqun. The infaq covers that. Just as Allah has covered all forms of aqidah in these ayat, He has covered all forms of a'mal in these ayat. وَيُقِيمُونَ salah Subhanallah. Nowhere in the Quran do you see that Allah says, وَيَقْرَؤُونَ salah إِقْرَأَ salah Where do we see that in the Quran? Nowhere. Allah does not ask us to recite the salah, but everywhere we say, وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ وَيُقِيمُونَ salah it's talking about the iqama of salah. Why? You see, when the insan, we want to battle against our enemies. Are we lying down on our back so that they can walk over us? Are we sitting down so that they can kick us down? What are we? We're qa'im. We're qa'im. And we bring out our chest. We're ready for whatever challenge that you throw to us, against us. This hala and state of qiyam is the most powerful position of the insan. When we want to take on an important task, we tie our waists and we stand up to attack that task and to carry it out in the best possible fashion. Allah, He wants our salah to be in this manner too. Does He not? When your salah is lying down on its back or on its side or sitting down, what can it do? But when it's qa'im wa yuqimuna salah, inna salata tanha anil fahsha'i wal munkar. This is the salah that repels any fahsha and munkar. Whenever fahsha and munkar are faced with this type of salah, the salah defeats them. The salah defeats them. Muttaqi is one that he gives rise to his salah. وَيُقِيمُونَ salata وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ yunfiqun. And that which Allah has given as rizq, unfortunately, when we look at life, we look at it from the physical, worldly aspect. When we hear rizq, we think money, food, all of these material and physical matters. But no, more important than this type of rizq is the spiritual rizq. Iman, awareness, information, knowledge, all of this is considered rizq. This power, the youth, in the youth, we can do much more than when we are older. Health, when we are healthy, we can tackle any task at hand. But when we are sick, the most simplest matters become difficult for us. All of these, this life is rizq. The muttaqi is the one who gives from this. He does infaq. He sabil Allah. He gives infaq. وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ One of the most important parts of infaq, and I am mentioning this to you because of its importance now, and the emphasis that the holy month of Ramadan has paid upon it is sadaqah. 
Sadaqah is various type, wajib, mustahab. But at any rate, this sadaqah, during the time of Imam al-Hujjah, ajjal Allah ta'ala farajahu sharif Imam alayhi salam is going to tell his caller, call to the people, whoever needs, so that we may give them. They will make this call. No one will stand up except one person, according to the riwayat, that he wants, the, he needs. The Imam will give him and give him and continue to give him so much so that he will become ashamed. The man will become ashamed, the person. He will regret and say, Ya Baqiyat Allah. They will address Imam Zaman in this way in those times. I made a mistake. I don't need this. Please take it back. What is the reply of the Imam? That which we give, we never take back. Unlike the governments of today who talk about human rights and democracy and progress and so forth, that they take by force. If you don't have now, they'll take it later. But the Imam is not that. He says, that which we give, we do not take back. Not only that, he invites people to come and take, not come and give. In those times, people will look for someone to give sadaqah to. But they will not find one person to give sadaqah. But alhamdulillah, in our time, Allah has given us this opportunity. We look. Anywhere in the world we find this opportunity to give sadaqah, to give. Those people during the time of Imam al-Hujjah will not have that chance. But we have this opportunity. Muttaqi is one that gives. I read some statistics recently. Just in the United States, which is considered the wealthiest country in the world, 50 million, not 50,000, 50 million people are food insecure. What does that mean? They don't know where their next meal is coming from. If the richest country in the world is in state, what's the condition of Yemen and Syria? What's the condition of those people in Iraq? We need to take advantage of this opportunity. We won't have it later. We won't. And the Rawayat mentioned that whoever gives sadaqah in the holy month of Ramadan, one is 70 times. One is 70 times. Look at this month of mercy and rahmah. What are the degrees of taqwa? Does taqwa have degrees, or is every muttaqi to one level? When we see the Quran, it says, Inna akramakum in the lahi atqakum. This atqa is. Afal Afal Tafdil. Afal Tafdil is if you take a word and you bring it into this form, it means more. In English, we would add more or er. If we take great, it becomes. If we take small, large, in the Arabic, it uses Afal Tafdil. For instance, we have. Two Ali's in Karbala who are Shaheed. Do we not? One is called Ali Akbar, like Af'al. One is called Ali Asghar, like Af'al. Sagheer became Asghar, Kabir became Akbar. Taqwa becomes Atqa. Inna akramakum, inna Allahi atqakum. Those who are have karama and kareem, their level of karama is based on the level of their taqwa. From this we see that the taqwa that the Quran talks about is not three, is not one level but three. One of is taqwa umum, general taqwa, where everybody is commanded to follow and develop. Which is 
carrying out the wajibat and refraining from the muharramat. One level of taqwa is khas, it's special. This in addition to carrying out wajibat and refraining from muharramat, we carry out the mustahabat and refrain from makruhat, and even at times what is mabah we stay away from. If we think it's going to impact us and take us away. This is khas. One level of taqwa, which is the highest level of taqwa, is akhas. Where the person does not think of anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They refrain from anything that takes their mind away from Allah. Does not Amir al Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam say in Dua Kumail wa qalbi bihubbika mutayyama? Don't we read that every Friday Eve? What is the definition of that? To make my heart mutayyam with your love, O oh Allah. What is mutayyam? Mutayyam is something that is full and overflowing. If you take this glass and you pour water to the highest level, it's full. When you continue to pour, it starts to overflow. Amir al Mu'mineen teaches us to ask Allah to make our hearts like this. When our hearts are full with love of Allah, when our hearts are full with Allah, is there room for anything else? Is there room for other than Allah? This is the akhas and the highest level of taqwa. Based on this, we see that when it says, Hudalil muttaqeen, this hidayah is of several types as well. One type of hidayah is for that muttaqi who is in the general level. Then the higher type of hidayah is for that muttaqi who is in the special level. Then there's the other type of hidayah, ashaddu hidayatan, which is for that, one per that person whose heart is full with Allah and empty of other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah says, it entails these matters. It entails these matters. Everyone takes hidayah and guidance from the Quran based on the level of their taqwa. Based on the level of their taqwa. This hidayah has several meanings. One of the meanings that a group of mufassirin and the author of Majma'ul Bayan amongst them has accepted is that the Quran is guidance for those who have taqwa. The other meaning that Allama Sayyid Muhammad Hussein Taba Tabai in Al Mizan has accepted is that the hidayah of the Quran is for that person who has saved his or her natural taqwa. What is natural taqwa? Fitrat Allah allati fataran nasa alayha. This fitra and special form of creation that Allah has created us in our hearts. Every human being, every human being, regardless of nationality, color, whatever it may be, Allah has placed this Iman in Tawheed, a small version. This Iman in Yawmul Qiyamah, a small version. This Iman in Nubuwa and Imam, a small version. Inside our hearts, this is called our fitra. If our, if our actions are so evil that we are misguided and we destroy and bury this fitra, this hadaya of the Quran is not for us. But if our actions are not so bad and we were smart enough not to kill this fitra inside of us, this inner taqwa, this natural taqwa, the Quran will benefit us. And this hidayah is two types. Ira'atu tariq like your GPS. You want to go here, I wanted to come here. I turn on the GPS. The GPS guided me. It showed me the path. To take someone by the hand and let them reach their goal. The hidayah of the Quran 
is that it takes the person who is muttaqi and brings them to their objective. And naturally, the objectives are different as well. Some people, their objective is paradise. Jannatin min al anhar. The Quran takes their the muttaqi and helps them reach their goal. But other people, they want jannatul liqa. وَرِذْوَانٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرٌ They want that Jannah. The Quran takes their hand, the Muttaqi's hand, and allows them to reach that goal as well. That all they want is to be in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if they did not have all of the rewards of Jannah, they would still be happy. They just want what Allah gives them, regardless of where they were. They just want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore we see this fasting of the holy month of Ramadan, this holy Quran which has been emphasized and revealed in this month. One ayah of the Quran, the reward is one khatim and completion of the Quran in this holy month. That it helps us understand and puts everything in focus for us. Our objective should be to attain taqwa, to attain taqwa. The discussion in taqwa is very in-depth, very useful and very beautiful. But unfortunately, you know, in one gathering, we can't address everything. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu in tattaqullah yaj'al lakum furqana. If you have the taqwa of Allah, Allah gives you furqan. Furqan, what does it mean? The power to distinguish, to give farq. Furqan is from farq, difference between haq and batil. This taqwa takes our hands and brings us to this level where wherever we are confronted by haq or batil, the smooth of taqwa inside of us helps us distinguish between the two. Distinguish between. All this fasting, all of this difficulty, it's not without purpose. And its most important purpose is this. All this recitation of the Quran, it has a purpose. So much so. Allow me to mention one more point and two sentences, inshallah, about the musaib of Khadija, Khadija salamullaha alayha, on the condition that you recite aloud salawat. You see, in that first ayah I mentioned, Shahr Ramadan, Alladhi unzila fi Quran, hudan lin nas. Quran is hidayah for nas, people. Is it not? But in this ayah, in the beginning of Surah Al Baqarah, hudan lil muttaqin. If we look at this briefly, we say there's a difference here. In one ayah, it's hidayah for nas, it includes everybody. In this ayah, it's exclusive for muttaqeen. What does that mean? This shows the significance of taqwa, perhaps even more than all of the other ayat and ruayat I mentioned to you. That the true nas is one who has taqwa. The true person is one who is muttaqi. If he or she doesn't have muttaqi, إِنْهُمْ إِلَّا كَالْأَنْعَامْ بَلْ هُمْ أَضَلُّ سَبِيلًا If they don't have taqwa, they're like the cattle and the animal, even worse and more astray than the cattle and animal. Why? Because the cattle and animal does not have the intellect and aql, and they follow the desires and the nafs. This insan, Allah has given them aql, and they still follow that same path. True insan, we see from these two ayat, is muttaqi. So when it says hudal lin nas, it's talking about muttaqi because everyone outside of muttaqi in the language of the Quran and the language of hadith is not insan. Their form may look like insan, but their batin is not insan. Imam al Zaman, Ajjalallahu ta'ala, Farajahu Sharif, sees our batin when he looks at us. In the next world, our batin comes out and our inside goes in. 
So if we are in the form of insan in this world, we are in the form of insan in that world. If not, it's like the example related from Imam Sajjad alayhi salam when he was in Hajj with that companion of his and the companion talked about the numbers of the hajis. He put his hand in front of his eyes and removed the veil. Kathir al-Zajij. وَقَلُّ الْحَجِيجِ The animals are a lot, he saw, in the forms of monkeys and whatever, doing taraf, tawaf around the Kaaba, and the hujaj were a few. هُدًا للناس, هُدًا للمتقين. The biggest message is that we are insan with taqwa. We are haywan without taqwa. And this is the Quran, we said. Its goal is to make human beings, to make Adam. And it does so. One of the methods through taqwa. La ilaha illallah. On a day like today, very briefly, the wafat of Sayyidah Khadija sallallahu alayha. On the last days of her life, Khadija is madloom, subhanallah. The mother of Fatima is madloom. The same approach that they took with Ali, because Ali is the Kufu of Zahra, the equal of Zahra, they took with Zahra, salamullah alayha. They tried to defame and bury the fadail of Amirul Mu'mineen. And one of the methods that they used is about Abu Talib, alayhi salam. La ilaha illallah. Abu Talib is in hellfire, but Abu Sufyan is in Jannah. They did the same thing with Zahra. The same thing with Zahra. The lies that they spread about her mother. 40 years old when she was married. She had two husbands prior to that. All of this nonsense and lies that became ma'roof, mashhoor. Even many of us, followers of a school of Ahlulay, right? if we're asked, how old was Sayyidah Khadija when she was married to the Holy Prophet? We say 40. Do we not? How many husbands did she have before? We say two, when she did not. The true history is either 25 or 28, her age of this time. And she was never married. So much. Khadija, she was known as Tahira for the someone for Sayyidah Zahra to develop in their womb. That womb must be Tahir. The highest level of tahara. True that a woman who's married and has children, her womb is tahir. And it's one level of tahara. But it's not that level of tahara that no child was formed in their prior. This zahara that all of us from the backs of our fathers and the wombs of our mothers, we came one after the other in generation, but for... This Zahra, salamullah alayha, to be formed, Allah sent that as a fruit from Jannah so that the Prophet ate that fruit at that night and so Zahra could be formed. Look at that, Zahra. And then you say these things about Sayyidah Khadija, salamullah alayha. La ilaha, la ilaha. I wish we had some time to discuss the life of Sayyidah Khadija. But let us say a few words about the death. On that night, or those days like this, she came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. She mentioned several points. One was, forgive my shortcomings. The Prophet began to cry. Khadija, don't say that. You never fell short in relation to me. You accepted the Prophet when the people rejected him. You supported the Prophet when the people attacked him. All of her wealth she spent that her other request was Khadija did not have a kafan, a shroud. She said, Ya Rasulullah, when I die, bury me in your shirt. Bury me in your shirt. At this time, the angel came down and brought the shroud, the kafan, for Khadija, salamullah alayha, the Prophet bathed. He shrouded her. He buried her 
in Jannat al when you go to Hajj to Mecca, you see what they've done with the grave of Khadija. He went inside that grave himself, Rasulullah, and laid the, lied down on the grave, and he cried for Khadija in the grave. But ya Umm al Mu'minin Khadija, my question to you is this. You were buried in a shroud from paradise. The messenger of Islam bathed you and he buried you. But how about that of your grandson Hussein? His body remained on the hot burning sands of Karbala for three days and three nights. La ilaha illallah. The women of Bani Asad came to the men worried in a state of discomfort uh, they asked what is wrong with you the men became worried they said if one of your loved ones dies what do you do they said we will bathe them we will shroud them we will bury them they said but what about the loved ones of Zahra <laughs> The loved ones of Zahra for three days, they're left in the hot desert of Karbala. The Bani Asad came to Karbala, they wanted to bury the Shuhada. But at first maybe they thought it was, was a simple task. Let's gather together, go to Karbala and bury them and come home. But when they arrived in Karbala, they were astonished. Bodies were cut into pieces. Heads were separated from the bodies. They did not know which part belonged to whom, whom to bury where. When they looked at the distance, they saw Imam Zain al-Abideen. They didn't know. According to the riwayat, we know. Imam Sajjad came. They asked Imam Sajjad, do you know who these shuhada are? We want to bury them. Imam Sajjad says, I know them very well. <laughs> Perhaps he was thinking, one is my brother. One is my uncle. <laughs> That one over there is my father. Imam Sajjad said, I will guide you and you buried them. With the help of Bani Asad, they buried the shuhada except two shaheed. One was Abi Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. The other was Qamar bani Hashim alayhi salam. The Rewaya mentions that Imam Sajjad went out into the field of Karbala. Imam Sajjad went out and his hands were empty. He's looking around like someone who has lost something. Imam Sajjad comes back. He went with empty hands, but he's returning and he has something in his hands. They look closely. It is the cut hand of Abel Fadl al Abbas. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Let us take Sayyidah Khadija, Imam Hussein alayhi salam, Abel Fadl al Abbas alayhi salam as our wasila before Allah. This is the month of dua. This is the month of the istijaba and answering of Allah, of dua. Allah has promised us to answer our dua in this month. And recite this blessed ayah together. Keep in mind your hawaij, the hawaij of our brothers and sisters throughout the Muslim lands. Those in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in Pakistan, in Kashmir, in Lebanon, in Palestine, in Yemen, in Bahrain, all over the Muslim lands, the Shias of Nigeria, the Muslims of Myanmar, the Muslims of China, one way or other we're suffering and keep the hawaij of Imam Zaman alayhi salam in for the hastening of the return of Agha Imam Zaman. Let us recite this ayah from the depths of our hearts. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. أَمَّا يُجِيبُ الْمُضْطَرَّ إِذَا دَآهُ وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءُ 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 for the acceptance of your fasting and amal and the answering of your du'as 
رحم الله من قرأ الفاتحة والصلوات